Victoria crowed that Phyllis was up to her eyeballs in debt, and Victoria had used the situation to her advantage. Nick realized that Victoria had bought the debt, and Victoria guessed that Phyllis had left that detail out. Victoria revealed that Phyllis had put up 75% of the hotel as collateral, which had been the move of a desperate woman. Nick questioned why Victoria was getting involved in something that trivial, and Victoria accused Phyllis of committing fraud. Nick considered the debt purchase to be equivalent to a hostile takeover. Victoria condemned Nick for always forgiving Phyllis, no matter what she'd done. Victoria insisted that it was just business, and Nick compared it to listening to their dad. Victoria asserted that she'd learned to be ruthless from the very best. Nick suspected that Victor wouldn't have handled it that way, but Adam would have. Nick equated Victoria's actions to the scheme Adam had concocted to get Nick out of Dark Horse. Nick blasted Victoria for giving a journalist secrets about their family. He quipped that he needed a flowchart to keep track of her shifting loyalties. Victoria was adamant that Adam had needed to pay for what he'd done, but Nick argued that innocent people like Faith were also paying. Victoria inquired how her niece was doing, and Nick flatly stated that the world had just found out that his daughter had been switched at birth. Nick lectured that it was their job as parents to shield their children from the mistakes their family had made, but he felt like he needed to protect Faith from Victoria. Nick pointed out that Victoria could have warned them, but she'd been hell-bent on revenge because she'd had to prove herself to their father. He spat to tell him again why she thought she didn't like Adam, and he stormed out. At Crimson Lights, Nate sipped coffee and flashed back to having sex with Elena at the clinic. He looked up and spotted Amanda, who noted that he hadn't called or written. He apologized, and she wondered if she'd bored him to tears by going on about her newfound family. She recognized that she was going through something messy and complicated, and she understood if he'd hit his limit. Nate reiterated that he couldn't be happier for Amanda. She pointed out that he'd shown it by ghosting her, and he claimed that he'd had no time to call between his duties at the clinic and the hospital. She argued that he could have sent a text message, and he conceded that he could have done more. She jokingly cautioned to never debate an attorney, and he wondered how he could make it up to her. Amanda offered to let him take her out to dinner that night. Nate requested the night to get his head together and get some rest so he could give Amanda all the attention she was worthy of. She noted that she'd never been turned down that eloquently, and she looked forward to one night free from the chaos at Chancellor Communications. He asked what he'd missed, and she realized that he really had been out of touch. She asked if he was sure there was nothing else going on, and he responded that it was nothing he couldn't handle. They planned to stay in touch. She headed out, but she looked back at him suspiciously. Later, Nate returned to Crimson Lights to pick up the keys that he'd left behind. Nick invited him to pull up a chair, but Nate figured that he didn't need any more caffeine, since he was already forgetting things and having problems sleeping. Nick chalked it up to all work and no play, and Nate regretted that he hadn't made enough time for Amanda lately. Nate mentioned that he'd just read the expose about Adam, and he couldn't fathom having someone that damaged in his own family. Nick stated that some betrayals resulted in losing the right to call oneself family. At Devon's penthouse, Elena stopped folding laundry and stared into space. Devon called to her and observed that she seemed a million miles away. He assumed that she was thinking about what had happened at the clinic the other day, but she remained silent. He assured her that she was an incredible doctor, but she had to put herself first sometimes. Elena insisted that she was fine, and Devon called her the most selfless person he knew. She guiltily asked him not to say things like that, but he swore that she was the personification of goodness. Elena lamented that she made mistakes and had faults like everyone else. Devon pressed to know what was wrong, since there was obviously something going on with her. He figured that people who were always helping others were usually the last ones to reach out when they needed to be saved, but she replied that she didn't need saving. Elena admitted that she'd been struggling with a few things, but they were nothing she couldn't handle herself. Devon questioned whether it had anything to do with him being out late with Amanda. With Dina's time on Earth rapidly approaching its end, Jack doubles down on his efforts to track down that much yearned for necklace. Luckily, his efforts are rewarded and he is able to present it to his mother before she breathes her last breath. Dina's peaceful passing is observed by those closest to her, Jack, Ashley, Tracy, Abby, and Kyle, and in the aftermath, the Abbott offspring are left devastated. In their grief, they'll turn to each other and, in Ashley's case, to a former spouse. 
Nate continues to bemoan his night of passion with Elena and the guilt he feels over betraying Devon Festers. When he's summoned to Devon's apartment, Nate is sure the jig is up, and he readies himself to be honest with his cousin. However, Nate quickly learns that Devon is none the wiser about the affair. Instead, Devon is worried about Elena who has, of late, been overly tense, agitated, and confrontational. When pressed as to possible causes of Elena's mood, Nate pleads the fifth and then proceeds to allow Devon to hold himself responsible since he has been spending so much time with Amanda the past few days. In other Genoa City news, Kevin receives a blast from the past, might it be his homeward bound, ever loving and ever scheming mother, Gloria. Plus, Chloe advises Chelsea to sever all of her ties to Adam. Meanwhile, Phyllis will spend the week full of ire. First, she'll blame Kyle for his and Summer's decision to elope. Then, her long-simmering rivalry with Victoria will reach a boiling point and require Nick's level-headed intervention. Again. Finally, Ray receives a surprise proposal, Sharon anxiously awaits important news about her health, and Lily clears the air with Amanda at society, Billy and Victor exchanged barbs. Billy stepped aside to take a call, and Victor revealed that Lily was the one he wanted to talk to. Victor remarked that Lily had become quite a formidable businesswoman, and he saw her father shining through her. He questioned how she could get up in the morning and go to work with a misfit, but she asserted that Billy was her partner. Victor groused that Billy was a gambler and an adrenaline junkie, but Lily found it refreshing that Billy was passionate about everything he did. Victor called Billy a liability, pointing out that Billy had rolled the dice on the future of Chancellor Communications. Lily conceded that she'd had her doubts in the beginning, but everything had worked out like Billy had said it would. Victor warned that she was sorely mistaken if she thought the battle had been won but he believed she could still emerge victorious if she showed Billy the door to protect her employees, her company, and her job. Lily informed Victor that Jill did the hiring and firing, and she doubted Jill would oust her own son. Victor urged Lily not to allow Billy to ruin the company the way he had ruined Restless Style, Brash and Sassy, and Jabbit. Victor refused to allow Billy to use Chancecom to go after the Newman family, and he anticipated that Billy would crush Lily's chance to create a respectable company. Lily defended that Billy was good at what he did, and the story they'd run on Adam had been a public service and a huge success. Lily told Victor to let his wife know that his pressure tactics hadn't worked any more than Nikki's guilt trip had. Victor huffed that he had no intention of letting Lily or Billy use Newman Media to attack his family, but Lily argued that it was no longer Newman Media because Victoria had sold the division to Chancecom. Victor ominously reminded Lily that he had a way of righting a wrong, and he departed. Billy and Lily completed their brainstorming session, and he prepared to go back to the office to write up their ideas. She decided to pack it in for the night, and he volunteered to walk her back to the Grand Phoenix. He asked how her conversation with Victor had gone. She claimed that Victor had told her to force Billy out of the company, and she'd agreed to think about it. Lily laughed and revealed she was kidding. Lily recounted that she'd told Victor that Billy was very good at what he did. Billy guessed that Victor had told her that Billy was a liability to the company, and he found it ironic that the job was the one thing keeping him from going off the rails. Billy thanked Lily for sticking up for him, and she noted that she'd also made a mess of her life by causing the accident that had killed Hillary. She considered them both to be works in progress. Phyllis was on the phone in her hotel suite, demanding to know what she was paying her money guy for. Phyllis was appalled when her advisor suggested that she turn to Nick for help, and she ordered him to do his job and hung up. She answered a knock at her door and found Nick there, and she sighed and turned away. Nick called it the worst welcome ever, and he implored her to tell him what had her tied up in knots. Elena insisted that she was fine with Devin and Amanda hanging out, although it sometimes made her feel insecure. He insisted that there was nothing be insecure about, and she regretted how she'd handled things because he deserved better. Devin swore that she was everything he could want, and he amorously offered to remind her. Elena winced as he started kissing her neck. His phone rang, and she encouraged him to take the call. She told him that she'd wait for him upstairs. Later, Elena returned downstairs and wondered why Devin hadn't met her upstairs after his call. He informed her that he had, but she'd been sleeping, and he hadn't wanted to wake her because she'd looked more peaceful than he'd seen her in a long time. He invited her to go to society, but she opted to just stay home. 
He offered to see what they had in the kitchen, and he insisted that she stay off her feet because he wanted to pamper her that night. Elena stared forlornly at a photo of her and Devon. She received a text message from Nate, who checked in to see if she was okay. She typed back, I can't keep doing this. It isn't fair to him. Nate requested that she not do anything until they talked. Devon returned and reported that their only dinner option was to order in. Elena quickly wrote back to Nate to tell him they'd talk the next day. Devon asked if everything was alright, and Elena fibbed that Nate had just been making sure she could cover a shift the next day. Devon proposed that Nate find someone else to cover, so Devon and Elena could do something fun instead. Elena pointed out that she'd already agreed to work, and Devon applauded her for not going back on her commitments. She proposed that they make the best of the time they had then, and she kissed him. They began to undress. Elena fought back tears while making love with Devon on the couch. He asked if he'd done something wrong, and she tearfully asked if he'd ever wished they could just stop time to try to make the moment last forever. She pledged her love, and he responded that he loved her more. In the Grand Phoenix lobby, Phyllis updated Amanda about her battle with Victoria. I'm gonna burn Victoria Newman. I'm gonna burn her so bad she will never, ever underestimate me again, Phyllis vowed. Amanda recommended that Phyllis get a good lawyer, and she suggested Christine. Phyllis vehemently opposed the idea, and she hoped Amanda would help her instead. Amanda cited her exclusive contract with Chance.com, and she offered some friendly advice to be careful. Phyllis scoffed at the thought of following the rules. 